It's Platt, and today we talk about the Constitution. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today comes to us from the fine folks at 21st Amendment Brewing. It is their Hell or High Watermelon Wheat Beer. Um, a little background into 21st Amendment Brewing. The 21st Amendment was founded in 2000 by a gentleman named Nico Frescia and Sean O'Sullivan. Um, the brewery itself, or brewery slash brew pub, was founded in the South Park area of San Francisco. It's just a couple of blocks away from where the San Francisco Giants play, and I think it's also near either their financial or tech district. So it's kind of a hip happening neighborhood. And they quickly uh, gained traction in that neighborhood. Uh, they were voted uh, best brew pub, best happy hour, best burger by the San Francisco press. So they immediately kind of caught on into the area. Now, Nico and Sean met each other in 1995. They both recently moved up from Southern California to the San Francisco area to kind of participate in the burgessing uh, craft beer scene. They, uh, Sean had started off as a photographer and uh, paralegal. He claimed that he went from suits to boots to get into the brewing industry. Nico had been a uh, restaurant professional for years, also an avid home brewer. He had uh, moved up to San Francisco to write for the uh, Celebrator Beer News, one of the bigger uh, beer publications on the West Coast. Uh, they met each other that summer in 95 at a beer science course at UC Davis. UC Davis is one of the premier uh, brewing programs in the nation, uh, especially college programs. It was that over that summer that they started to get the idea behind 21st Amendment Brewing and kind of got the wheels in motion. For those of you that are unfamiliar, the 21st Amendment is the amendment that repealed Prohibition, or the 18th Amendment, which led to Prohibition. Um, and we'll get in that in a little bit. In, uh, but prior to 2015, all their beers that sold commercially or out in retail outside the brew pub were canned in Minnesota. Uh, 21st Amendment was one of the earlier adopters of the whole canned craft beer kind of movement. In 2015, they opened up their production facility in San Leandro. Um, they also had a, added a tap room to it. And today, that's where the headquarters for uh, 21st Amendment is. Real quick, let's talk about some of their other beers. Uh, they don't have a huge line of uh, beers, and they tend to be more a classic kind of West Coast IPAs, double IPAs, stuff like that. You don't have a lot of multi you know, maltier beers or different styles of lagers. Uh, but the first beer we are going to talk about is a lager. It is their Coaster Pills 4.9% ABV. This is a nice crisp beer um, that kind of features the Simcoe hop to give it that kind of hop crisp or bite to it. Uh, next is El Sully, one of the more popular beers. A 4.8% uh, ABV Mexican lager that won gold at the 2016 Great American Beer Festival. Uh, the next beer we're going to talk about is called Tasty. Love the name, love the name there. 8.3% ABV. This is a double hazy IPA. Uh, they use seven different kinds of hops in that beer. And it's kind of cool when you have that many kind of hops because you kind of have a range of hop flavors like you know, if you're the classic West Coast piney citrusy hops, but you may get a different kind of hop that adds this other notes or more of a flowery floral deal like the classic Noble hops do. So I kind of like beers that, uh, you know, kind of spread out the hop love. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, oh, and one more beer. Sorry about that. Hell or High Mango. I apologize. Hell or High Mango, 4.9% ABV, made with real mangoes. Um, sometimes at the brewery level, um, you'll have a fruit beer, but it could be a fruit puree. It could be a fruit syrup. Not always real fruit gets used, and sometimes just for practical purposes. But apparently they cut up real mangoes and put them in, which is kind of cool. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, let's check out the stats. So today, of course, I want to talk about the 21st Amendment, the one that repealed Prohibition. Prohibition was brought in by the 18th Amendment in 1920, also known as Volstead Act. 
Uh, the 21st Amendment was ratified December 5th, 1933. Uh, still, each year on that date, December 5th every year, you'll have a lot of your bars, restaurants, or whatever will have a national kind of day of celebration. Sometimes you'll see uh, breweries have commercials on that day. So it's definitely a uh, big day for us beer fans here in the U.S. Uh, it is the only amendment to repeal another amendment. Of all the uh, amendments in the Constitution, no others have gone back and repealed. Uh, one thing, though, that did, that did happen or during repeal was it was just a federal-level thing. They still allowed states to repeal or still have prohibition, and several states held on. Even Mississippi held on until 1966. That's right. That was three years before we landed on the moon. Mississippi still didn't want that devil whiskey out there. Uh, but luckily, <laughs> things have changed. Now, one of the things that happened after the repeal of Prohibition, which is kind of uh, unique, was we did not go back to the way business was before. Pre-Prohibition, you had a brewery, let's say an Anheuser-Busch, and then you had your local bar, restaurant, whatever, VFW, what, you name it. And Budweiser directly sold the beer to them. There was no middleman. And even back in the 19th century, uh, Anheuser-Busch would sit up bartenders with their own bars, help them get started as long as they sold Anheuser-Busch products. Well, after prohibitions were repealed, somehow the politicians decided, well, you know, if we have more regulations, that'll stop the devil whiskey. Uh, but what they basically did was create some more millionaires. Now, after Prohibition, you have what they call the three-tier systems. You have the breweries, you have the bars, then we give you a, a distributor. And the distributors, by law, are the only ones that can take the take beer from Budweiser and give it to the brewery. And, uh, of course, if they want to mark up 15 20%, that's fine. And so the people that got those original distributors license after Prohibition basically had a uh, license to print money. Uh, and again, if you have one of those distributing license in a state and you're the one who gets to sell Jack Daniels, Budweiser, whatever, you're doing pretty good. But that was one of the changes post-Prohibition. Well, enough about Prohibition. Let's get to drinking. Nice kind of golden color, maybe a hint of copper. A little haze, of course, plenty of bubbles, plenty of effervescence, about a finger of nice white foamy head. Slight hint of watermelon on the nose, not a lot. Uh, let's give her a try. All right, I get it. I get in the beer. Uh, it's not a sweet type beer. Um, Watermelon's kind of a weird fruit. Like, you you see this big watermelon, and you think, oh, just big, sweet, da-da-da. And it's it's not quite as intense. I, I, I think people will think of, like, watermelon candy, but if you eat a watermelon, it's not as intense flavors as I think a lot of people think. It's not as quite as sweet. I mean, of course, you get that, but uh, this is a, a subtler watermelon flavor. To that, it's a compliment. But you do get it. Body-wise, it's on the lighter end. Uh, plenty of effervescence. Nice, refreshing beer. Nothing, but there's not so much watermelon in it. They go, whoa, wow, that's watermelony. It's just a, a complimentary flavor. But overall, decent beer. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets you two know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.